March 15th to order. Uh, roll call, please. Roll call. Commissioner Bolt? Here. Commissioner Swerver? Here. Commissioner Sanders? Here. Commissioner Peterson? Here. Commissioner Lee? We're supposed to touch these things. Commissioner Hewins? Here. Here. Okay, before we get into item three, uh, since this is the uh, first official, official meeting of our newest planning commission, commissioner, I'd like to rec uh, recognize and, uh, and welcome James Fewens to our, to our group. Thank you. Do we call you James or Jamie? Either one. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to be official. It's oh. Jamie to me, so. <laughs> Uh, item number three is public comment. Any uh, members of the of the public are able to comment for uh, three minutes on any item of their interest uh, on or off the agenda. Any members of the public here? That seems like no. Number four, approval of the agenda. Got a motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Announcements and committee reports. Armando, anything? Informational items, number seven, anything? Oh, did I pass over the approval of the minutes? I did, yes. I did not. I passed over trying to move quickly. Uh, item number five, which I passed over, review, review and possible approval of the minutes of the February 2nd uh, Planning Commission meeting. Any uh, changes, or if not, I will um, accept a motion to, to approve the minutes. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Jamie, you should abstain. I abstain. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll get to the uh, public hearing items. Item number eight, uh, PCN 11029 Crestgate Pyramid. Karen will be doing that. Melby, senior planner. Before you tonight is a revision to the Crestgate Pyramid plan development. As you can see, it's located here. Here's McCar um, McCarran, and this is Pyramid. The red outline is the area. Briefly, this plan development handbook was before you in February, and you recommended to the City Council that only options one and three be approved. During the City Council hearing, the applicant presented an alternative plan. And rather than the City Council reviewing and approving the plan, they have remanded it back to you for your review and discussion tonight. Um, they also directed the applicant to provide no options within the handbook. If you remember, we had three or four options in the previous version. This one only has the one option. As a brief recap, the applicant is requesting to The handbook has four areas, the pink and the green. The pink is the commercial area, and then the green on my map there are the offices, and those both areas are developed out. Before you tonight are proposals for developments in area three, which is the orange and the blue. Um, basically, areas three and four is approximately five acres of the 12.17 acres. The recorded handbook permits the option of offices and senior housing in these areas, but the applicant is requesting to remove the senior housing option. What they are proposing is to develop um, an office building along Roberta Lane, and then this would be your personal storage and then RV storage in the back. The personal storage would consist of, of, of approximately 62,000 square feet and also would include an office and a caretaker's unit. In the area four up here in the RV area would consist of 40 stalls for RV storage. The other amendments to the handbook include changes to the signs, landscaping, and architectural standards to reflect the proposed amendments within areas three and four. Um, 
However, there are no changes to the standards for the existing office areas or the existing commercial area. This version of the plan development does not have any optional plans. In areas three and four, the permitted uses does still allow offices, however, in the lists of uses. In area three, the future office pad, which is the one along the Roberta Lane, would be seeded with grass and a flower, wildflower mixture, and then also landscaping would be installed along the street to, to maintain the streetscape, and then also some landscaping to screen the wall of the uh, personal storage. There are, this would um, put a ground cover on the pad so that it wouldn't have dust or anything while the economy turns around and they can build the office in the future. Summarizing the PD findings as discussed in the staff report, the proposed removal of the senior housing makes this plan development entirely office and commercial, which makes fi PD findings one, four, and nine. The combination of the additional office building and the personal storage provide a transition between the intense activity of the adjacent shopping center and the surrounding residential neighborhood. Maintaining the office along the public portion of Roberta Lane and the personal storage in the rear will maintain the character of the Crestgate plan development. This supports PD findings 2, 8, 14, 16, 8, and 19. The personal and RV storage will require minimal need for public services and less than the less than the offices, more our additional offices, and senior housing would require, which makes PD findings 3 and 13. The development of personal and RV storage is, in low, in, is low in intensity and bulk, development of only one story in height, and which will have low traffic generations. This supports PD findings 6, 7, and 14. The, plan, the common space within Crestgate Pyramid PD is the landscaped areas. The plan development standards maintain the landscape, the streetscape, and propose an enhanced landscape area with a water feature, which would be right here, along Roberta Lane, which provides sufficient landscaping to meet the intent of the open space requirements for the plan development. This makes PD findings 10, 11, 12, and 15. The revised plan in the plan development handbook maintains the integrity of the plan by sustaining the office residential character along the public portion of Roberta Lane, installing the streetscape in front of the future office pad, the enhanced landscape feature at the roundabout, the seeding, the seeding of the, with wildflower mix and such on the future office site and the screening of the personal storage wall as required by the handbook will soften the appearance of the personal storage from the public portion of Roberta Lane. This makes PD findings 17 and 21. This concludes my presentation. I'd be glad to answer any questions or uh, concerns. Thank you, Karen. Uh, any members of the commission have questions for Karen? Uh, I, I have a question, mm -hmm. and, and uh, perhaps it's better for the applicant when they speak, if you think so, Karen, when I have to ask the okay. question. Uh, the, the one confusing aspect to me is what the, the uh, eventual office site will look like when it is, uh, w will there be the the parking spaces that will surround the eventual office will presumably not be done. So it'll all be landscaped, what will eventually become both office and parking spaces? Yes. Okay. What, they would seed mm -hmm. it with a ground cover, a mixture of wildflowers and grasses in the interim until they want to develop. And then at that time is when they would finish putting the landscaping in for around this, the office building and the parking lot. And the... Um, the I, I shouldn't remember this, but I don't. Is the um, the sidewalk is not extended up there now? Will it be extended, even though the building will not be there? I can refer to the applicant later. Yeah. If you'd like. Yeah. Okay. And we I, put I, it that they have to maintain the street streetscaping. So I was assuming that included so the, the sidewalks sidewalk. and whatever kinds of mm -hmm. trees would be between the sidewalk and the street, just yes. as if it were already an office. That's the intent. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Intent. Chairman? Right. Yes. Go ahead, Art. Yeah. Uh, so really, it was brought back because um, we need to review the new option, and that was the office building that they're going to include. Was that it? The, yeah, this option includes an, an additional office building because, I mean, if you remember from our previous, they wanted to do the um, 
all personal storage and they are in this right up to RV right storage. Up. Right, right. So they're reducing it to 62,000 from, uh, I think it was 71,800 square feet of personal storage. They're reducing it down to 62,000. And then they're proposing approximately a 4,000 square foot office building. In the RV storage? And the RV storage also is, is still is in, in, in this option. Now, was that in the option last time, the RVs? It was, no, it was option two in the handbook. Which we didn't approve. Right. Which you did not approve. So if we approve this one, the RV storage would be included. That's correct. Thank you. Uh-huh. Any other questions for Karen? Uh, the applicant here would like to make a quick presentation. Do you want that on there? Or? Uh, sure. Good evening. For the record, my name is Ken Crater, representing the applicant and owner of the property. And uh, I'll keep it brief. Uh, as I gave a lengthy presentation last time, uh, we're in full agreement with the staff report. Uh, but just to clarify, yes, um, um, to the chairman's question, the entire area of this uh, uh, office site right here, including the parking, will be landscaped. What we're going to do is we're going to build the sidewalk and the landscape parkway between the sidewalk and the curb. We'll put in the permanent streetscape landscaping in that area. We will also put in the permanent landscaping up against the personal storage facility behind the wall, which will be a 10-foot landscape strip. And then in the revised handbook, it includes a recommended seed mix from the landscape architects. As Karen said, a mix of, uh, of drought-tolerant grasses, uh, grasses and wildflowers. And so this entire remaining area will be seated until such time as the office is built. And in addition, uh, when the uh, personal storage facility is built, this entire detention basin landscaped area will be permanently landscaped. So as you're driving down Roberta Lane, you'll see a uh, continuation of the sidewalk, the streetscape, and then the large uh, detention basin with the landscape feature, which includes the fountain. So that's the basic plan is to put something in that looks good uh, maintains that streetscape along Roberta and uh, avoids any issues with dust or things like that. And that's really all I have to say. Other than that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the Commission has. Did, have you at any point gotten uh, feedback from the two offices that would be on the other side of the private street, that are on the other side of the private street from where the storage units will be? Um, I know that uh, the Lens have talked to a good number of folks in there, and I think by and large uh, people are very satisfied with this plan. And I think uh, clearly this is uh, much favored having the one additional office building along Roberta to continue that office character all the way down to the end of the cul-de-sac bulb. And you, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, you did meet with the neighbors? We uh, had a um, meeting with the neighbors at uh, local elementary school, and they're very much supportive of the project. In fact, I think you can see that no one's here tonight. We've worked with these neighbors literally since 1995, and they have uh, Mr. Lynn's cell phone number and don't hesitate to call him. And in fact, uh, not too long ago, he met one of the neighbors because they were concerned a uh, tree that they planted when they first built the project was growing too big and pushing on the wall and and uh, creating issue with roots and so they cut the tree down just to keep the neighbors happy so yeah they've gone to great lengths and then subsequent to that we had additional conversations with some of the folks in the neighborhood that uh, after they had a chance to go home and think about it they had some additional questions and uh, we even made a couple of additional changes to the handbook uh, things like uh, having the staff go out and and help folks that are, say, a first-time boat owner to safely get their uh, boat parked in and out of the facility, uh, having a video surveillance system. So we've definitely uh, worked uh, diligently with the neighbors on this project. I might comment that that uh, tree that you took down was the one that I look at out my window. Oh, no. So just, I understand. I was just kidding. I understand it needed to be done. <laughs> but there are always two sides to every issue. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Um, I was having some discussions with our newest uh, planning commission member this morning and um, about the, the what you will see visually 
going each other either way on McCarran as you look over the the um, uh, the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, what you will see, whether you will see any or all of the RV and whether you will see any or all of the storage units and what, it'll, what it will look like from up there. Can you comment on that? Yes, I can. Um, I'm sure all of you know that there's a pretty good sized slope in this area. This is McCarran Boulevard right here and it drops off about uh, 12 to 15 feet uh, before you get down to the level pad grade. So you've got that slope elevation change, and then in addition, there's an existing wall for a little short stretch here, and then we will continue that wall down the entire length of the project. So if you're a, a motorist in a normal passenger car, you really won't see much of anything except for the masonry wall. If you were in a tall truck, you might look over the top and see some of the storage units down in this area, but basically uh, you will not be able to see much of anything in this area because of that wall uh, that's constructed along McCarran Boulevard. That isn't currently there. Yeah, there's only a short section of it, and that, that will be continued along the entire property frontage. And it will continue, too, down the uh, east side uh, between the RV facility and the old uh, uh, golf shop video store. Any other questions? Is, uh, Karen, staff is in complete support of this? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is a public hearing item. Looks, looks like we probably are unlikely to have public comment on this, but I call for the public comment if there is any. If not, I'll bring it back to the commission. Any discussion or questions for anyone else? Some, I'd like to entertain a motion then. I'd be happy to make the motion. That would be fine. I move to forward a recommendation to the City Council to tentatively approve PCN 11029, the Plan Development Handbook for Crest Gate Pyramid, adopting findings PD1 through PD21, and the facts supporting these findings is set forth in the staff report. The tentative approval includes that the applicant shall file the application for the final approval of the plan development within one year from the date of the City Council granting tentative approval of the Plan Development Handbook. Due to the nature of the tentative planned development, the Planning Commission does not recommend that the City Council require a bond at this point in time, as stated in NRS 278A.490. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item number nine, City of Sparks annual report to the Truckee Meadows Regional Planning Agency. Who's going to be doing that? Armando? That one. Um, Armando Ornella, City Planner. Uh, the, uh, the Nevada state law in uh, Chapter 278 um, requires that each planning commission annually submit to the Regional Planning Commission and the Regional Planning Governing Board a, an annual report indicating what actions were taken in the previous calendar year, uh, which either assisted or, or furthered the, uh, the, the regional plan. So uh, this, this annual report is for 2011, calendar year 2011. Uh, I think it's fairly self-explanatory. If you have any questions, I would be glad to address them, or if you would like me to elaborate on anything that's in the report, I would be glad to do so. Uh, but basically, the, the, the staff recommendation is that the Planning Commission approve and forward to the Truckee Meadows Regional Planning Agency, the Regional Planning Commission, and the Regional Planning Governing Board this annual report. Any questions for Armando? Um, yes, I did. Good. Um, I can't remember where, but, it, but farther in the back, you talk about the Todds, and we're going to look at those areas. So oh, in terms page, of um, right, page three. It's, it's it's page three or page. That's right. Where you see, I want to make sure that's what we're looking at there. So you mentioned that you're going to do a review this year on those. 
We are going to do a review, um, the, and, and actually, uh, uh, those of you that were uh, that serve on the Regional Planning Commission, uh, there was a uh, Regional Planning Commission meeting yesterday, and there was essentially a, a workshop of sorts oh, okay. in terms of the update. But uh, Sparks is going to be asking, uh, and I believe Rena will be asking uh, as well, that we look at the Todd Quarters, some of the uh, some of the standards, uh, in particular the ones that uh, we've uh, uh, have found it uh, difficult, given our our. Uh, particular market circumstances here are the uh, minimum density and in particular the min minimum FAR standards. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that uh, I think um, everyone is suggesting needs to be looked at is the, you know, the, the size and the extent uh, and the length really of, of the, the existing Todd quarters and whether those are still appropriate. Uh, so I, I think, you know, those are items that we're asking be uh, considered as part of the 2012 update to the regional plan. Great. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Can I add something, too? Yeah, and as the meeting went on, we did an exercise last night with little dots, and, uh -huh. and underneath the Todd, uh -huh. there were several. So it wasn't just coming from Sparks. Right. I believe Reno wants to review that as well. Great. Right. And are you can rest assured that the uh, regional planning commissioners will Keep on top of the talk for you and the rest of the city. That's right. right. Thank you very much. You bet. We have our orders. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Anyone would like to make a motion? I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve and forward to the Truckee Meadows Regional Planning Commission and Governing Board the City of Sparks Annual Report for calendar year 2011. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. <clears throat> Item number 10, designation of a planning commissioner to participate on the Regional Transportation Committee, RTC, Regional Road Impact Fee Committee. Armando, can you explain that? Well, and I, I first of all, I'd like to apologize for the lack of material in your packet uh, about this. Uh, I think, you know, the, the long and the short of it is that we sort of dropped the ball, and I think uh, one staff member thought somebody else was doing it and vice versa. Uh, but at any rate, the, uh, the RTC has a, ha now has a standing committee uh, which deals with the regional road impact fee system, uh, which actually is um, undergoing a full review. Uh, they've hired a a firm out of Washington, D.C., uh, with a lot of expertise in this area. And uh, this is a, a very active, uh, ongoing effort of the RTC to review the, the impact fee uh, structure to look at, uh, in particular, a lot of the credits that have been issued in the past and, and are out there. Uh, and also to consider uh, something that um, Sparks and, and, and some of the other uh, local jurisdictions have asked for, which is potentially looking at a tiered impact fee uh, system uh, to reflect potentially the the differences uh, in in demand uh, uh, on the transportation system from different types of development, and so that's t that's tied to the um, this idea that if we're going to have urban infill and, and, and redevelopment, that to some extent we need to look at the uh, the economics of of doing different types of development and and the related costs. So. That's all going on. Um, what I, I don't have for you and uh, is is the dates and times when that meets. It does meet during uh, regular business hours, and so really what we're looking for is the, the planning and commission to to um, nominate or, or to um, designate someone to be a Sparks uh, planning commission representative on that. Um, what I would suggest uh, is that uh, if we can identify one or maybe one of you on an alternate. Uh, we will get that those uh, dates and times out to you, and if you, if for whatever reason uh, the designated folks can't make those dates and times, then then we'd have to bring it back to you. All right. Do we have anyone on the commission who's particularly interested in serving on this committee? Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a recommendation. I think the uh, one of the commission commissioners would make an excellent representative uh, on this committee, and that would be Commissioner Sperber. Well, thank you. I'd like to do it. <laughs> Probably too soon to throw Jamie out there. <laughs> yeah, we're we're going to nominate you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking that was a yeah, like put... new guy on the block. It might be reasonable to, um, if, if you want an alter alternate, to right. uh, ask uh, uh, Jamie Fewens 
to serve in that role to kind of get a feel for some of the things that are done. Would you be willing to do that, Jerry? Absolutely. Okay. Great. Okay, thank you. And uh, I will get, uh, in the next day or two, we'll get information out uh, via email, uh, both in terms of meeting schedule as well as uh, we'll assemble a packet of background materials. Sounds great. Okay. And we'll get, we'll get that up uh, to both of you, and, uh, and we, we appreciate you serving on that. Okay. Thank you. All right, item number 11, public comment. Uh, anyone from the public like to make a comment? Three minutes on or off the agenda? Karen. Karen, you have your option. <laughs> Any comments? Any comments from the commissioners? Yeah. I have one, Mr. Chairman. If, if we could have the Secretary Janet uh, maybe email all of the commissioners um, new email addresses and everything for Jamie and all that updated. For the commissioners? Yeah. Okay. Great. Good idea. Anything else from the commission? Sure. I'll accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. And a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Gone. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you.